Hello everyone. Um, I haven't got a cold frame, but I would like a cold frame because everybody else on the plots seems to have one. Now, about four years ago, I wouldn't have had a clue what a cold frame was, but I'll tell you the, de the definition of a cold frame is, an ag in agriculture and gardening, a cold frame is a transparent roofed enclosure built low to the ground, used to protect plants from adverse weather, primarily excessive cold and wet conditions. The transparent top um, admits sunlight and prevents heat escape uh, via convection that would otherwise occur particularly at night um, when should I use a cold frame in late spring and summer use cold frames and mini greenhouses to provide extra warmth for tender summer crops such as aubergine tomatoes and chilies this encourages quicker ripening and a larger crop these structures can also be used for propagation of plants getting them started off basically um, also, you can put in a cold frame, and, and this is what most of the people on, our, on the Eden plots use them for. Um, most commonly, you can put salad greens into a uh, cold frame, such as spinach, chard, arugula, and a variety of lettuces can all be grown in cold frames. But it's not just limited to that. Other vegetables can be successfully grown in a cold frame too, including radishes, leeks, and carrots so I want one let's build one because we were supposed to be doing the, the garden path today and doing the um, the paving slabs down the garden path but it was so bad the weather today that we couldn't so I've, what I've done instead is I've built a cold frame I hope you enjoy it I'll take you through it more or less step by step it's a little bit unconventional but as I say I, I like it and I hope you will too all right boys and girls See you in a bit. Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda, aka Tony. Now on today's episode, we were going to devote it to uh, laying a garden path with, um, with stone uh, paving slabs. Which we did start, but you might be able to hear pounding on top of the tiki hut. It's peeing down and it has been raining now for about an hour and a half and we're wet through so we've made a start on it but I'm not going to be continuing with that and showing you that today because it's just it's just not going to happen today we're hoping that tomorrow it's going to be a bit better but instead what I've decided to do is build uh, a small um, what do they call that? cold frame god my mind's not right it's this rain and this cold a cold frame so on today's episode we're going to do a small cold frame um, a double glazed one actually a double glazed cold frame for your baby plants so as your seedlings start to come through next year you can put them out and get them prepared for the big wide world in your cold frame now this one is going to be a very small one but it could be ideal for doing on a patio on a or on a balcony or something like that for you so I'll just show you the principles going to be the same you can just scale it up if you're going to do a bigger cold frame um, but yeah, I'm just going to knock one up today for you, let you have a look. Okay, enjoy. Okay, that's what we've got to work with. Now, because I'm a skip diving get, and I just scavenge things from wherever I find them, that was out of a skip. So what we're looking at there is a double glazed timber uh, window uh, that, as I say, was rescued. Now, what I like about that is we've got this handle already attached to it. And also you've got this lip that goes around it. And with it being timber, what I want to do, I've got to get rid of that top lip that sticks out there. But I'm going to keep the rest of that. But I want to get rid of that because I want that flat at the top. And you'll see why in a bit. But it's double glazed. It doesn't seem to have perished. You've no steam inside it. You've no mist inside it. Inside of it. You might not be able to pick, pick that up. But there isn't any mist inside it. It just needs a bit of a, bit of a clean up. On the surface but that's what we're going to be using that's going to be the sort of window part for the cold frame the top of the cold frame okay so the first things I'm going to, sorry the first thing I'm going to do is remove any of the um, the sort of openers that are still attached 
and clear it up. It's not got the lip all the way around because they've obviously had to sort of brass it off when they uh, when they took the windows out. But we can make make do and mend with that. But I like that. I like that lip idea. Okay, so let's crack on. We'll work with what we've got. Okay. So I've removed the busted lifter and uh, and the handle because the handle is on the wrong side. That's for closing it. When you're living in your house, you close it on that side. And so I want that handle. I'm going to retain that handle and the little screws that go with it. I've got the little screws as well there over here. Because you waste not and you want not. Got the little screws. They they're okay. We'll see how they get on. Uh, and I'm going to put that on the opposite side. But because the damage is here where that lifter was, where obviously they'd broken it out because they weren't being very careful when they took the windows out. I'm going to use this edge as the edge that I'll clean up. Um, and um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to use this edge, the edge I'm going to clean up. And I'll use that to put the hinges on later. Although I might not be able to because looking at that, that's been gouged, hasn't it? That looks like it's been gouged out. And that's a pity. So yeah, I won't, I won't be using that edge. I'll have to use the opposite. I'll have to use the opposite edge. I'll have to take that off and straighten that up and get the uh, the hinges on that. So that's the next step, really, just to flatten off one of those with the lips on. <clears throat> and we'll do that right now. All right, we've got a double glazed glass lid ready-made for us there. However, we need to build the planter box. So that's your next step really, get the planter box built. Now I've got this stuff, which is one inch by six inch, and it's treated timber. I've got loads of it. Um, I bought that from Handyman Stores in Platt Bridge, near Wigan. So that's what we're gonna be making the boxes out of. Okay, we'll get that done. Okay, now the only real tricky part of this is the sloping roof. Now we're going to be working off the inner frame, not the outer frame with the lip, but the inner frame, because that's going to slot into the box itself. But you need a bit of an angle to the roof. So to do that, what we did is we measured um, the inner frame, and then, account, and then accounted for about another sort of a, I don't know, what would you call that? Not even a centimetre, just a few millimetres, six or seven millimetres extra length um, to give you a little bit of play when that slots in to the box. So you mark, your, you mark that measurement onto your, um, onto your six by one and see where that falls, where you're happy with it. You don't want to go away to, to nothing. So I've left a couple of inches there, uh, and that's where it lands. And that, 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 I'm happy with that angle. That's, a, that's an angle, a sloping roof, that I'm happy with in the end. And so once I've cut that out, I've cut that bit out, and it's gone and fitted onto there. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but you want that sloping roof. You don't want it to be completely flat. You want the sloping roof so that when the sun comes in, it, uh, when we ang when we angle it outside towards where the sun rises and falls, we want the sun. We know that the sun's going to be coming at a certain angle. It's going to be coming at this sort of an, an angle, and so we want that roof at that sort of an angle so that the light gets in and um, creates the photosynthesis that we need for the plants. That sounds like a long-winded excuse, doesn't it, that? But that's what we want. We want that angle, and that's the only real tricky bit to it. So you make your, um, you make your, your measurement, you draw your measurement from that inner lip, that inner frame, add a little bit on, only about eight or nine millimetres, to give you a bit of play, and then you mark that on, which we did, and we cut that off, and so we've marked it on just by using a template. We use that as a template and mark that on to, uh, to the next section of wood. And we're going to cut that out now. And that gives us our angle, our slope for the roof. Okay. I hope that's as clear as mud. Now I keep telling people I'm not a joiner. I'm not a joiner. I'm not a carpenter. After this, you'll believe me. <laughs> I'm sure. 
Right, I'm just showing you now that that skylight or lid or whatever you want to call it is going to drop in kind of like that. Yeah, so I'm going to put the front on. I'm just uh, piecing the three um, boards together there. That's one of the sides. That's going to be affixed shortly that top bit when it rains the rain will then slope off to, to that direction i'm just being careful not to touch it because it's just balanced all up at the moment but um i mean obviously that's not going to be there that's just there to hold up the pane of glass while i'm just filming this little bit but that's how it's going to sit it's going to drop in to the box to the inner box and uh, and hopefully be a nice little snug fitted lid that now you've got to try and get each side to be a kind of mirror image of the other one. So that's something that's uh, worth bearing in mind. As you can see there, the slope goes like that, and the slope goes like that. Once that's stood up, it should mirror then um, its brother over there. So we're going to put the long pieces down here, the two by ones, there and there. I've made sure that when... Uh, the roof's seated on to the slope the lip doesn't catch that so when that drops in the, the lip drops there were that seated will then miss the lip so it's not preventing the lip from closing properly now in order to make sure that that top uh, piece of wood lines up and is fixed to that I've put some uh, two by one on the outside there and that's just um, equidistant both sides of the of the planks and screwed in you can't even see the screws they've sunken into the wood because the wood's damp it's sunken into the wood and you can't even see any screws you can't see any screws here can you which is good it is good that but if uh, if you weren't a hundred percent sure before you make that fixing, you'd have a devil of a a devil of a job trying to get those screws back out again because you've lost them now, haven't you? They're buried within the within the heart of the wood. So I'm going to get a couple of more of those um, two by ones affixed to there, and uh, and jobs are good. But yeah, that that mirror image thing is a, if you'd get that wrong. So you get two versions of that basically with the timbers on the other side. It just won't work. You've got to get that mirror image. Okay. Now, what the um, uh, the side two by one acts as, as well as as being a joint for uh, your top piece to the rest of the uh, boards, is you can use that as a handle to lift and carry your box around and move it around the plot, put it wherever you'd like it. Um, but I just shot, thought I'd show you that. That's the mirror. That's the mirror image um, for the sides. Now we've got to create the fronts and the backs. Now to account for the, it, I've just measured these, and it's a little because it's swelled a touch. It's a little over an inch per side in your depth. So I've I've accounted for that. I'm, I'm going to do it at, at just over two inches. Add that just over two inches on to this measurement, which is the uh, that's going to be the top, so that's going to be the back of the box, and that's going to be the front of the box. So, again, we're, we're looking sorry, I'm knocking everything over here. We're looking at the depth of that inner frame. Making a right pig's ear of this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll measure it and then I'll tell you. But what you've always got to remember to add the extra couple of inches on because the fronts and the back uh, boards are going to be going up to the ends. It's not going to be going here. You want it to to span that gap and meet up uh, as accurately as accurately as you can to uh, to the sides on the outer, not the inner. Okay. Okay, so the front and back of the inner frame is just over 20 inches. So what I'm going to do, and what I have done rather, is I've accounted for the extra inch, or just over an inch either side. So I'm going to go um, 22 and a half inches 
um, make another a further five cuts at 22 and a half inches and uh, the front will fall about there which will mean there's a slight gap but we can fill that that gap later but I'll just get the box in in in, uh, in place and then we'll take it from there all right these are handy for jobs like this, these little set squares. You could make sure you're getting the angles right, the right angles right. So once I know that that is right, I'll, uh, I'll put my screws into the two screws into the. I'll do that now. Do you know I keep forgetting um, we're hurtling into winter and it goes dark about quarter to four here now at the moment. And I started that at three o'clock. I'll show you where we're up to anyway. All right, now that shelf-looking thing at the front is there for a purpose. I've, put, I've got the hinges on. Obviously, it fits in because I'm perfect and practically brilliant in every single way. I'm a bit disappointed with that, though. You know, that lip that was broken. That's a shame. I'm going to have to put something... I might even re-look at that and set, try and set that piece out and replace that piece. Because it's the only thing that's uh, that's a bit shock. Well, that's a bit shocking there, but never mind. We'll start it up at uh, at a further juncture. The box is built now. It's all in place. Everything's hunky dory. Now most people have them opening that way, but um, I prefer them opening that way. And the reason for that is I'm a bit of an eccentric lunatic. No, it's not. That's um, it's just the preference, really. I mean, it's going that way. I can lean over. Once the handle's on, I can pull it up. Watch it not open now. Oh yeah, it is. Here we go. Opens up like that. And that lip at the front there keeps it from flopping forwards too much. We've got the insides there. The inner workings are there. Um, I don't know. I just prefer them that way. I prefer it because it's... I don't know. I don't know why. Um, when the wind comes howling down... Yeah. It blows... Um, from the top end up here and comes down. Now this is going to be facing the wind so as the wind does blow that will act as a bit of a windbreak and also the wind pressure if it's set like that will force the lid down rather than blowing it up if you like. Um, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it but I, I just prefer them that way. I just prefer them opening that way. I'm a bit of a weirdo. But it'll be a one-off won't it? Most people as I say they have them opening from the top like so I'm just going to put the handle on there now, and uh, and Bob's your uncle. Where is the handle? Here it is. Here's our little handle. Um, put that on, give it a clean up. I'm going to get off because it's dark now, it's about 20 past four. So that's took us about an hour to get that knocked up. Um, and I hope you like it. I like it, I think it's pretty cool. All it needs to have done now is um, I'm going to get the paint which I have got knocking about. I've actually, in fact, I've got some, some wood stain, some of that decking stuff somewhere, um, and I'll paint it all up and get it all hunky dory sort of paint up the edges where I've cut the edges and all that kind of thing. And then I'm going to line it with something. I've got plenty of... I mean, you could use this polystyrene stuff, but I've got some of that spongy, uh, like, yoga mat stuff. I'm going to line it out with that. I might give, a catch, give you a catch-up on that tomorrow once I do it. Um, but we're nearly there anyway now, boys and girls. I'm just going to get that handle on. Ta-da! Give it a bit of a dust off and paint up tomorrow when we're laughing. I'll just open the leg, show you. Okay, so as I say, all that panel at the front is for is to keep it, to keep it up like that so it doesn't go flopping over and damage the hinges and stuff like that. And, um, and that's all that that's there for, really. Inside you've got that sort of a setup. Sorry about the lighting, like I say, it's gone dark now, guys, it's, uh, it's, it's nearly half past four, and it's going pitch black around uh, quarter to four now. I don't know it happens every year, but it always surprises me, because I'm a simple-minded creature. As I say, I'm not a joiner, and uh, that's the best I can do with a low-powered battery jigsaw and a Black & Decker drill driver there and some screws now when you work out how much that costs to build <coughs> we went to handyman stores and i actually got um i actually got eight sort of metric metric six foot these not exactly six foot 
but they're like metric six foot and we've used four of them to make that and that comes to 16 pounds for the four and then we've spent probably about another quid in screws so we're up to 17 pounds and it was one pound 50 for those hinges and the brass hinges then they're quite nice i know it's a bit much for the allotment plot like but uh, you get the screws with them it's all brass looks nice doesn't it there only one pound 50 for two hinges so uh, what are we on there 18 pound 50 18 pound 50 you'll be paying a lot more than that in the shops i'll bet if you want to buy one of them wouldn't you it's only a small one as i know like it's a what it's a it's not even two foot square that but uh that'll be fine and dandy for the little plants get the little plants in there and i might make another one because i've got i've got that there um trouble is the, the other i've just I was checking out the other glass that didn't have the frame on it i was checking it out it's been outside for about a year that and it's got a big crack in it so i've only got i've only got one pane quite tricky them to separate um you know separate the two pieces of glass but uh, anyway there we go that's that was it i thought i'd use that because why not you know why not use the whole the whole frame you know the windows the windows already set into the frame and it's double glazed it haven't perished and uh, i think it's all right that that good thick wood as i say i'm going to insulate it as well so i might show you that tomorrow or whatever maybe even put a base into it but it's quite heavy that um the fun part will be getting it through them door that door wasn't it i suppose yeah never, never thought of that i'm sure i'll get it out um i will get it out because that's 24 inches and that's uh, i think that is 22 and a half something like that it's only, in fact it's only 18 inches or so high isn't it so yeah i'll get it out i'll get it out it'll be all right it'll be all right right all right yes so hope you enjoyed that i certainly enjoyed that it was quite it's quite therapeutic i like working with wood have a go at that it could be a little project for you you can build along with the guru, can't you? I've been Guru Mafinda, a.k.a. Tony. You've been fantastic, fragrant, beautiful as always. If you're a lady, <coughs> if you're a man, you've been a man. <laughs> Whatever description you want to describe yourself as. Fit, young, virile, old, mature. Whatever, I don't know. I don't want to keep making stuff up. It's daft, isn't it? But uh, you've been it, whatever you've been. You crack on. Keep growing with your heads down and I'll catch you later. Saturday night tonight, don't get too drunk. You're up for the plots in the morning. Bye bye boys and girls. Love you, take care. Okay, that was the guru, enjoying himself. Uh, I'm just about to jump in the shower now, but stay tuned for tomorrow's episode because hopefully, fingers crossed, if the weather's all right, we're going to continue. We're going to complete the paths. The path is, um, it is a stone paved path but only up to about halfway up the plots where the lady farmers uh, greenhouse is it stops there but uh, we'll try and get that done if we possibly can tomorrow if not we'll be plotting on more plants and doing something else always have a plan b me uh, keep growing with your heads down take care of yourselves and each other and um, we love you all all right take care now have a good one bye bye now <laughs>